that mist then is, as it go, travels a few more millimeters, is hit by heated gas coming from these two heaters, which then helps drive off neutral solvent molecules. We have soda, we have cookies, we have chocolate, ice cream, a wide variety of samples, all of which are being sold in dispensaries and have stated concentrations of THC on the label. And basically we wanted to just analyze these samples to, to see how consistent the label claim is to what we found. And we're going to stand to piss off a lot of people. <laughs> My name is Roger Volker. I'm the, currently the lab director of OG Analytical. We used an in-house method to extract the THC. We then took that data and then calculated the amount of THC, THCA, and total THC in each of these samples. The majority of the products, what we find is that the, the label claim is significantly higher than the amount of THC that we actually detected. This is total THC as a mass, it's, so it's, you know, it's milligrams per bottle. If I were testing applesauce, I am now under FDA oversight. The labs are val you know, demonstrate competence, generally through accreditation. That is, I'd say, the single fundamental biggest difference between cannabis testing labs and all other labs. That's going to have to change, ultimately, I think. I think that it is appropriate to regulate these commodities, but that regulation needs to be based upon approaches that are already in place for other products on the market. And so what that means is we need to make sure that the final product is tested, that the testing should be done by labs that actually have demonstrated their capability, ultimately I think through real method validation and accreditation. We just simply just simply look at what's being done for everything else and just do the same thing.